Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this video, we're going to begin our fifth version of the task list. Here again, we're making a fairly minor change. Uh, what I want to do is finally get our model to exist in a database and not in just in memory. All of our previous implementations have used an in-memory data model, which means that when our uh, server would go down, we would lose everyone's tasks and, and all of our users and, and everything. Uh, we don't want that to happen, so we want to have a persistent data store for this. And I am going to do this inside of a Postgres uh, database. You can use whatever database you want. And in fact, the way we're going to do this using a uh, tool called Slick is actually going to make it easy to choose which database you're going to use. The reason I am using Postgres is because I have a lot of my students putting their things out on Heroku, and Heroku has Postgres as the free database that they allow. In order to work on this, because you don't want to have to deploy to Heroku every single time you make a change, we still want to be able to do this on our own computer, you need to install Postgres, and depending upon your operating system, that may vary. Then we need to do a little bit of setup. So, at least under Linux, the way that this works is when you install Postgres, it creates a user called Postgres, and you need to go into that user because they are basically the root user on Postgres. So if we uh, if we go over to the Postgres user and we run PSQL, which is the command line, we get to here. Um, and this allows us to, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time here. This is the super user under our database and it can do all types of things. Uh, in particular for setup, I ran these two commands and these commands I put here in a file in, called setup.sql in a directory called sql. Uh, these are the SQL commands to create a user for me. Uh, note my high security password here. That is intentional. This is getting pushed out to a GitHub repository. I don't want to put a, a real password there. Um, and then create a database, the database that we are going to use and give it the owner of the user we just created. So I would type those in here. I've actually already done that. After we do that, then everything else can be done on our user. So I can now do PSQL task list and if I can type PSQL at least. And that puts me into the Postgres uh, under my user and in the database task list that was created with this. Okay, uh, so once we're in here, I'm going to do the setup. Basically this first video was just setting up things in Postgres and our database. The tables that I'm going to use for uh, for this version of our task list are just these two tables. We have users and we have items. And so if I copy all of that and come back into here and paste them, I now have those two tables created inside of here. So our users have an ID. Um, it's serial, which for Postgres means this is going to be an automatically incremented integer value. Uh, and it is the primary key. The username, which is up to 20 characters, and a password, which I allowed people to do some really strong passwords, up to 200 characters. And then we have the items that they have on their task list. They have their own ID and they have a user ID, uh, which is a reference to the table. Okay, so this is doing a foreign key reference uh, to the table and then the text for what that item is. We're doing a very simple application. This is a sufficient database setup for us in this, um, in this situation. At that point now, our database is all set up as we need it. There are some other elements that I needed to add to the build on here to get it so that things were working. So I added these three lines. Previously, we already had the setup for play slick uh, slick is the database binding that we are going to use it's the, a library for doing for scala connecting through jdbc 
uh, connections to work on databases. I also had included this thing called CodeGen. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Um, but I hadn't set up any particular database. And as I, one of the great benefits of Slick is it works with a lot of different databases and, give, and you have to do very little work to change between them. One of the things you have to do is specify which database driver you're going to use and we have to load that in. So I'm saying here that I'm loading Postgres. If you were going to use uh, MySQL or MariaDB or something else, you, this line would be different for you. Okay, and, and you can go find out what the requirements are for using your particular database uh, with a JDBC connection. This line here is just a uh, manager for the database connections that is associated with Slick. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% certain that I, uh, that I need it. I think the newer version of Play Slick has it as a dependency, but it's in there <clears throat> anyway. And then I'm also including this line here. This is a Java library that I will be using to hash and salt our passwords. Okay, so uh, as we saw here, our users have a password. You could just store their passwords in the database. Obviously that is remarkably insecure. It makes things easier. The better way to do it is to store them uh, as with, where they have had a one-way hash applied to them, and this library includes code for, for making those one-way hashes. So that's all we're using it for. If you don't want to hash your, your passwords or if you have something else, uh, some other way that you want to encrypt the passwords, you can feel free to use those. Okay, so these three lines are the extra dependencies that we had to add to the build.svt. Once again, I will be pushing all of this out. Uh, I'll label it with a comment, setting up the database. Application.conf. So I've added a new section to this, slick dbs default. Uh, so it's the database setup for slick. And there are three values that we're setting, a URL, a driver, and a profile. The driver here for me is the PostgreSQL uh, driver. It has an associated profile with it. Once again, if you're using a different type of database, those two lines are gonna change somewhat. And then I have the URL. Now I set the URL twice and there's a reason for that. So this is the URL configuration on this machine. As you just saw, when I created user M. Lewis, I gave them the password, password. And so this URL is on my local host. It is referring to task list and it specifies the username and the password to connect with. This here is going to go looking for an environment variable. And because of this question mark here, if it doesn't find it, it's not an error. It just doesn't set it. Um, the reason for this choice is because this is, that environment variable is used by Heroku. And so when I run on my local machine, this line doesn't do anything. When I deploy this to Heroku, this line overwrites the one prior to it and uses the Heroku database settings, which as you would expect has a much more secure uh, username and password. Um, okay, so that gets us to the um, point of of basically having things set up in the project so that we can work with it. I will come back in the next video and we'll look at doing the code generation and start setting up our controllers.